second year. All right, so it's time for Grandma Reads a Story. And um, I'm so happy to be here today with Grandma Sonetta again. And we're going to hear a couple of great stories. Um, this is a um, partnership with the Foster Grandparents Program of Oakland County, uh, sponsored by Catholic Charities of Southeastern Michigan, of course, with the Pine Public Library. So, Take it away, Grandma Sonetta. Well, hi, friends. It's Grandma Sonetta back with you again. And the first book that I'm going to read is Lynette, The True Story of the Tooth Fairy, written by Robin Cruz, illustrated by Valerie DeCampo. In a time long ago, there was no tooth fairy. No tooth fairy. It seemed impossible, and yet it is true. Though many years ago, the children like you lost a tooth, they didn't tuck it beneath a pillow, and they didn't wake up the next morning to discover that the tooth fairy had left a small gift for them. But all that changed when a kind fairy made a human friend. This is their true story. It was Midsummer's Eve. The fairies had gathered at dusk in Moonglow Glen, just as they did every year to celebrate the sunny days ahead. It was Lynette's favorite day, but she sighed as she looked up from the small star-shaped pillow she was embroidering. Oh, little mouse, she said. Flynn turned secret ingredients into magic dust and blossom helps the flowers bloom. Every one of the fairy folks had a special talent, except for me. Little Mouse glazed up at his friend, Lynette, was good at needlework, collecting coins and shiny bubbles, and making friends. But none of those things seemed special enough. That afternoon, Lynette and Little Mouse stretched in the sunshine together. I've often wondered why this valley is called Moon Glow Glen, Lynette said. Even when the moon is full at night, it is dark here. If I were truly clever, I would fill the sky with stars to make the glen as bright at night as it is by day. The sound of cries nearby startled Lynette and Little Mouse. That's Blossom, Lynette said. And it sounds like Flynn too, said Little Mouse. They scampered off to find them. Lynette and Little Mouse joined their friends who were hiding behind a tree stump. Blossom clasped one hand over her mouth and pointed with the other. That's the human child, Flynn gasped, and he is crying. It wasn't every day that the fairies happened upon a human child. Lynette peered at the boy while Flynn and Blossom backed away. Why is he sad, Lynette wondered aloud. 
Her own heart ached a little as she flew over without hesitating for a moment. Hello, she whispered. The boy turned wide-eyed toward the quiet voice. Oh, hello, I'm Lucas. He blinked hard several times. You are so small. Am I dreaming? Definitely not, Lynette said. I am one of the fairy folk. Most people can't even see us. You must be special. Why are you crying? Maybe I can help. I don't think so, he sputtered. My tooth is loose. I know it's going to fall out so a big one can grow in, but I'm scared. I understand, Lynette replied. Even thinking about my teeth falling out makes me afraid too. Lynette had an idea. When your tooth falls out, let a light shine in your bedroom that night, she said. If you hide your tooth as a gift for me, I'll use it to make something magical. She paused then added, there's one more thing you must know. My name is Lynette, but please don't call me that. We fairy folk don't use our names with humans. It's part of our magic. Waving goodbye, Lynette hurried away. She thought of the stars she loved shimmering above moon glow glen and her heart raced. She was eager to turn her idea into magic. Lucas's tooth fell out that very evening while he was slurping pudding with his granddad. It barely hurt at all. Granddad flashed Lucas a smile and wrapped the tooth in his handkerchief so it wouldn't get lost. They both laughed when Lucas poked his tongue through the gas where his tooth had been. <laughs> Lucas Granddad tucked him in snugly Shall we let your light shine while you sleep he asked Lynette had said to let a light shine Granddad Lucas whispered, can you help me hide my tooth? It's a gift for a small friend and I want to write her a note too. We'll hide it under your pillow, Lucas, Granddad said. And I have another idea. He left for a few moments and returned with a quill, some paper and a honey cake. Everyone likes sweets. Lucas wrote a note to Lynette and tucked it under the honey cake. <laughs> that night, Lucas noticed a light shining from across the glen. That night, Lynette noticed a light shining from across the glen. Little mouse, she called. That's Lucas's house. We must hurry. She grabbed a shiny coin and slipped it into the pocket of the star-shaped pillow she had sewn. Lucas was deep asleep when Lynette floated in on a breeze through the open window. 
Little Mouse scurried in close behind her. Lynette gobbled the honey cake and saw the note tucked underneath. Little Mouse nibbled the crumbs and then dove beneath Lucas's pillow, looking for the tooth. He crawled out with a small lumpy thing. It's Lucas's tooth, Lynette said. And then she read the note aloud. Dear small friend, I know I must not call you by name. Maybe I shouldn't even write your name. And so I will call you the Tooth Fairy. That's how she got the name Tooth Fairy. Thank you for making me less afraid. Your friend, Lucas. P.S. Here's my tooth. Please let me know what you do with it. Little Mouse left the little star under Lucas's pillow and they both hurried off. Back at the hollow, Lynette started to sew. We have a lot to do, she said to her friends. We must hang this star before sunrise to surprise Lucas. Flynn, will you add Lucas's tooth to your recipe for magic dust? And Blossom, please paint the big star with honey so the dust will stick when we sprinkled it on. Once the star was covered with honey, Lynette, Blossom, and Flynn sprinkled it with golden pollen and magic dust. We must go now. It's almost sunrise, Lynette called out, leading the way into the night sky. Oh, wow. Oh. Beautiful. Lucas awoke before dawn. Looking under his pillow, he found a small star-shaped pillow with a shiny coin tucked inside. There was a note for him too. Dear Lucas, thank you for your tooth. It is a lovely gift. I am sure you were brave when it fell out. When you awake, look up. There is something bright and beautiful in the sky just for you. Your tooth helped it sparkle. Love, your friend, the Tooth Fairy. Yes, when you see your surprise in the sky, make a wish. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas went to the window and looked up. A star twinkled high above him, the biggest, brightest star in the sky. It's my star, Lucas said to himself. Lynette promised to make something magical, and she did. He closed his eyes and wished for more stars to brighten moon glow glen.
News of the two fairies spread quickly throughout the glen and far beyond. Lucas told his friends, Lem, Nicole, and Rose. They told Francisco, Lisa, and Oliver. And they all told their friends about the two fairy too. And so it went. Lynette and the other fairies were soon making hundreds and then thousands of stars. And to this day, they hang those stars to brighten the night sky with children's lost teeth sprinkled in as part of the magic. <laughs> oh, friends, wasn't that a good story? That was a lovely story. Oh, I enjoyed that so. So what did you like best about it, Grandma Sonata? Well, I have one more page to read. Oh. And then I'll tell you. One night in Moon Glow Glen, Lynette and the Fairy Queen looked up at the starry sky. Lynette, the Queen said, you are brave and clever, just as you hoped to be but it is your kindness that brightened the glen and the big beautiful world. Lynette glazed up at the bright new stars in the sky. She smiled and said, good queen, it is, most, it is more than enough to be brave, clever and kind. It is truly special to brighten the glen and the big beautiful world, just as I wished. And I am so grateful to be the two fairy now and always. The end. Wow. Yeah, okay. So she finally found what she was good at, didn't she? Yeah being brave and making people feel good. Oh, that was very enjoyable. And I also like in doing that, she, you know, they helped each other. He wanted to um, make it brighter, the sky to be brighter for Lynette. Lynette wanted to be kind to him. And somehow both people caring and wanting the other person to get what they need is really the sparkle in the story and the story. Right, <laughs> right. And that was, that was so, so enjoyable. I hope my little friends enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed reading it. Let Grandma Sonetta know if you would, what you liked about the story or make a comment on Facebook. We'd love to hear comments. Oh, yes. All right, our next story is Derek Jeter Presents Night at the Stadium, written by Phil Builder, illustrated by Tom Booth. Beautiful picture. It is. It looks like the stadium full of people, doesn't it? Sure does. The Yankees win. That was the awesomest game ever. Gideon cheered. Time to get some autographs. Dad said, follow me. Gideon loved collecting autographs. His autograph book was filled with signatures, but one was still missing. The autograph he wanted more than any other. Everyone stay together, Mom said. 
You hear that, Gideon? His, his sister, Audrey, added. Just to let you know, you've had Rachel Shar Sharon saying that it was awe, it's beautiful. I love being read too. Thank you for the beautiful story. And um, it makes me want to go to a baseball game. So you're doing a great <laughs> job, Grandma. Oh, we. <laughs> Neat. As Gideon's dad led the family down the aisle, Gideon reached into his pocket. And oh no, his autograph book was gone. He turned to look for it, but suddenly the crowd pushed him away. He bounced off paperbacks, pinball, off purses, and ducked under diaper bags. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh my. Finally, Gideon bumped into a door. He stumbled and swaggered in. He zigzagged up one ramp and zigzagged down another. Hello, anybody here? Up ahead, Gideon spotted some shadows, moving shadows. He looked for somewhere to hide, but there was nowhere to go but forward. What are you doing here, said a voice. All Gideon saw was the groundkeeping equipment. He blinked hard. You talk? Of course we talk, the hoses said. We all talk, said the rakes. Some of them talk too much, said the hoses, spraying the rakes. And they need to stay away from our outfield and stop messing up our grass. The rakes pointed their, their tinies. They need to stay away from our infill and quit muddying our dirt. Excuse me, Gideon said, interrupting the argument. I need to find my family. Can you help me? Why didn't you say so? One of the rakes said. Go down this hall. And one of the hosts squirted the rake again. How would you know? Gideon didn't know where he needed to go but he knew he needed to find his family. While the rakes and the hoses are arguing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Gideon zigged up one ramp and zagged down another. Heads up, look out kid. Equipment. <laughs> Gideon ducked as a baseball frizzed by his ear. You talk too? Of course we talk, the ball said bouncily. We all talk, the bats added woodenly. We play too, the base boasted. A bat leaped into Gideon's hand. You're up, kid. <laughs> all of a sudden, Gideon was playing baseball with the baseballs and the bats and the bases too.
Gideon took several mighty swings and then he remembered his mission. I need to find my family. Can you help me? Why didn't you say so, said the gloves. We'll give you a hand. Go down those stairs and know the bats cracked. You go up these stairs and how would you know the ball said Bobby? The bats are always in the hitter's hand and you gloves are always on the fielder's hand. We go everywhere. Gideon still didn't know where he needed to go, but he knew there was no point in listening to gloves, balls, and bats bicker. As Gideon zigged up one ramp and zagged down another, he heard more voices up ahead. Talking food, asked Gideon. Of course we talk. We all talk. The peanuts, the Cracker Jacks, even us. <laughs> Sushi at a baseball game? That's what they all say. We always get a raw deal. <laughs> we don't. There's a song about us. Take me out to the ball game. Pop, pop, pop. I need to find my family, Gideon said. Can you help me? Why didn't you say so, the cotton candy said. Go to the corner and no, the peanut said. Go to the corner and the hot dog sprayed ketchup and mustard everywhere. <laughs> we all know where to go to see the one person who can help this boy find his family. The hot dog shook his buns. <laughs> <laughs> Monument Park. This is the awesomest night ever. Gideon pushed open the door and stepped into Monument Park. I was waiting for you, a voice boomed. A talking monument? Gideon blinked. A talking babe roof monument? That's right, Gideon. Gideon pointed to himself. You know my name? I know everything about this place. I also know everywhere that everyone needs to go. He pointed to the other end of Monument Park. Wow. There he is, babe Ruth. Yeah. <laughs> Famous baseball player. Gideon blinked hard. Then he blinked even harder. Standing right in front of him was the captain, Derek Jeter. Wow. I was waiting for you, Gideon, he said. Waiting for me, Gideon asked. I have something that belongs to you. He pulled out Gideon's autograph book. You're still missing a signature. May I? The captain signed his name right on the front cover. Thanks, Mr. Jeter.
Wow. Oh, wow. What a day. Me is everything. Suddenly, Gideon's family raced into Monument Park. There you are, Audrey shouted. You're in big trouble. We were worried about you, his mom said. Where have you been? You won't believe what happened, Gideon said. Meet my new friends. He ran over to the doorway. But there was nothing <laughs> and no one. I'm telling you, you won't believe. Gideon stopped. Even he didn't quite believe his <laughs> night at the stadium. The end. Wasn't that good? That was so excellent. I enjoyed that too. If I'm not mistaken, Derek Jeter is from Michigan. I think he's from Grand Rapids. I'm not sure on that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure he's from Michigan. Well, you're getting lots of hearts, Grandma. Uh, Sonata, some comments. That cotton candy, yum! And <laughs> I'm so happy he got the signature. <laughs> he says, loved it. Thank you. So, yay, <laughs> Grandma. Yay. <laughs> well, I'm glad my friends enjoyed it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I enjoy reading this books to you guys. I, I do. I, I enjoy it. I, Grandma Sonetta enjoys coming and reading to her friends. Thank I look you. forward to it. Thank you so much for commenting. It makes it so much more fun. So, so yeah, we, you know, we enjoy it together, but yay with somebody else's comments. And just right. <laughs> so again, thank you so much for partnering with us and, um, we're so grateful to have Catholic Charities Southeastern Michigan, the uh, foster grandparents, and you today. And we will be back again um, next week. And just to let you know, uh, lunch off the truck is at the library tomorrow. It's about 12.30, 12.40 they come. And tomorrow is three for one. When a uh, kid comes up, they get lunch for Friday but they also get two more for Saturday and Sunday. Ah. So very special. So you get three days worth of lunch off the truck tomorrow. Very nice. Oh. And we have, um, we also do put your porch at Pontiac and lawn story time on Tuesdays. We made kazoos last week. And I hear oh. now we're going to read a story about skateboarding and we're going to have some finger skateboards that you can try practicing with and take home. Oh, next nice. Week. So we're going to have lots of fun. Join us for our in-person story time on the front lawn of the Pine Public Library. So again, thank you, Grandma Sonata. And just remember, keep reading and turn in your summer reading yes. um, time because you can get prizes. We, we give out so many prizes, more than McDonald's, Prizes, lots of prizes. Oh, well, not yeah. more than McDonald's. That 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 would be that's a misstatement. I mean, we give out <laughs> we met we give out lots of prizes though. So, oh, good. So good. thank you very much again. And, um, All right, friends. I enjoyed you and hope to see you soon. Okay, and don't stop reading. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. It was a delight. You're a delight. Thank, thank you. you. Bye, friends. See you soon. Bunch of hearts. <laughs>